Hello, you will now hear a brief summary of the movie The Substitute. Enjoy watching. Jonathan Schell, a war veteran and mercenary, lost three of his teammates in a failed operation in Cuba. The U.S. authorities deny their involvement, and the mercenaries are left unemployed. We move to Miami, where an unusual American school is located. Mexicans beat up a dark-skinned boy, and two teachers intervene to break up the fight and calm the heated crowd. Jane knows that Lucas instigated the fight, but pretends to be innocent. He threatens the teacher with violence if she doesn't back off. However, the school principal, Mr. Olini, intends to take some kind of action, even though there was no direct threat, and he doesn't care that others fear Lucas. Outside, Latino students, led by Lucas, surround Jane's car, making dirty jokes and not allowing her to leave the parking lot peacefully. Jane feels uneasy and looks around. When the elevator doors close, she screams in surprise, but then she breathes a sigh of relief when she sees her man, Sheila. What happened? He asks. Nothing, just my students want to kill me, the soldier tells his beloved, explaining that he has been forced into retirement, which he finds unacceptable. With nothing else to do, Sheila hands him a set of shurikens, saying she received them as a gift. In the evening, his old comrade, Joy Six, offers him a job. They need trained guys. Attorney Wolfson chooses between two companies, and one of the mercenaries even brings a videotape with his presentation. Thank you for sharing, they said. They are hired to take down a drug baron. He needs a reliable team to ensure the safety of his merchandise and eliminate anyone who interferes with his business, even if they are federal agents. But Sheila is not a killer, he is a soldier. He grabs the thug by the throat, causing him to soil his pants. Wolfson was still lucky that it was a soldier. The thing is, with a drug case, it's better for him to sit without a job. When Jane went for a run along the waterfront, she was ambushed by a huge Indian who struck her leg with a stick. Shay, who happened to be looking for his girlfriend there, didn't let him deliver the next blow. Despite the veteran's training, he couldn't handle the thug, and he fled upon hearing the police siren. Jane's leg was broken, and she's convinced that Lucas sent the Indian, but she asks Sheila not to do anything because he will definitely throw a grenade at him. Jane asked the man to call a teacher to replace her at school, but the teacher said that the testimonies at that time were pointless. The unemployed soldier asked his buddies to make him a teaching certificate and add him to the teacher's database. The next day, he went to school under the name James Smith, wearing a suit. Sheila looked around to understand who he would have to deal with. In the hallway, he met Principal Riley, who pretended to be concerned about the beaten teacher's health. The classroom was in complete chaos. Students were stealing equipment, dancing, or simply sleeping. When Sheila decided to introduce himself to the kids, an empty beer can flew at him immediately. The students actively sabotaged roll call and made lewd jokes. It was Lucas's turn. Now Sheila knows what the teenage thug who sent his girlfriend to the hospital looks like. Nobody wants to learn the lesson. Jerome, for example, prefers to read rap lyrics. Agent Sheila entered the teacher's lounge and introduced himself to Sherman while the librarian noticed Jane's broken leg. Jane concluded that it's better not to mess with the Skulls, the local school gang that surely had a hand in attacking the teacher with their leader Lucas. Jane wanted to expel him, but for some reason, the principal covers for him. Before, the Kings of Destruction, as the gang is known, used to work in the police department's anti-crime unit. And now, Lucas has even gotten involved in politics. Sheila entered the principal's office to understand who she was dealing with. Men study each other. Roly noticed the teacher's tattoos and scars, while Sheila noticed the director's expensive watch. Men study each other. Roly noticed the teacher's tattoos and scars, while Sheila noticed the director's expensive watch. In such a dangerous place like this school, they could chop off his hand to take it from him. But Roly, holding a cricket bat, immediately showed that jokes with him don't end well. Sheila went to the shooting range and offered his mercenary friends to help him deal with the school gang. 
but Kala doesn't like that Sheila is involved in some nonsense that doesn't bring in money. For such insolence, his testicles suffered immediately. Our hero then offered the rest to shake down the gang, most likely involved in drugs, which means they have serious money. The next day, his people infiltrated the school disguised as workers. Today, Sheila is not as kind as on the first day, he started a conversation about Vietnam. This time, the can came back to the face of the one who threw it. Tay decided to hit the teacher, but unexpectedly for everyone, the teacher twisted the thug and made him lick the floor. Rodriguez initially refused to hand over Sheila, but quickly changed his mind when the teacher bent his fingers. Rodriguez excused himself to the infirmary, where he immediately complained to the principal about the teacher. The thug threatened to drag the administration to court. Riley called for the security guard's assistance. Meanwhile, Sheila was telling stories about how he destroyed the Viet Song. The students themselves can boast scars from bullets and live injuries received during street wars. Lucas doesn't like that the teacher managed to control the class. Cameras were installed everywhere in the classroom. The principal entered and reminded the teacher that corporal punishment is not allowed, and if he doesn't apologize to the students, he will be fired. The teacher reminded that he cannot be fired without a two-week notice. I'll give you two weeks. Thank you, I don't need more, said Riley. Riley is gathering information about the unusual teacher, and mercenaries are already tapping his phone. Jane managed to return home on crutches. On the table, she found a card that touched her deeply. Her student, Lisa, wished her a speedy recovery. In the schoolyard and corridors, everyone stares at the dangerous teacher. Lucas was late for class, and Sheila made him write, I apologize, on the board a hundred times. Sheila tells how in her youth, she also joined a biker gang. Such stories are not pleasing, but the main thing to remember is that nothing good awaits them there, except maybe a one-way ticket. He talks about the central prison that awaits citizens as soon as they turn 18. Jerome believes it's better to do that than to toil for a miserable salary all his life, working with a dozen school kids, who are already children, and the youth, for some reason. Doesn't want them to join gangs either. So why don't they think about their own safety and future? The principal entered the classroom and informed Sheila that he wants to talk to him after the assembly. Raleigh also met Lucas in the bathroom today. After the assembly, Sheila heard them and prepared himself by putting on a bulletproof vest and loading his gun. They armed themselves and the juvenile criminals. Lucas initially wanted to cut the teacher and then shoot him after seeing the car with the bandits. Sheila pretended to be scared and ran back into the building. The principal sent additional security guards to assist the gang. Sheila ran into the library and ordered Ant to lie down on the floor. The soldier immediately disarmed the director's men. One of them was targeted at the woman, and she was ordered to take the cart with weapons and call the police in 15 minutes. Sheila wanted to play with the attackers and deal with them hand to hand. He threw one thug out the window and dialed 911. Oh, sorry, I just made a mistake in the flight. Two more security guards were sent. The thug picked up Sheila's gun and shot at him, but Sheila pretended to be dead. The next one was supposed to be in, but the veteran twisted the goon's arm and also threw him out the window. That's how Sheila loosened up his neck, and the director, for some reason, doesn't want to talk to him anymore. Sherman came to visit Jane and there he saw their joint photo with the man who pretends to be a teacher. Sheila came home with food and Jane asked where he works and then called him Mr. Smith and smeared rice on his face. Meanwhile, Joy followed Lucas closely and the bandits exchanged cars near the grocery store. Sheila tells her favorite person about the director's involvement with a street gang. She also confessed that she has become fond of the students and they listen to her. The mercenaries continue to monitor the gang. They brought Sheila here as well. She immediately recognized the Indian who attacked Jane. A boat approached the dock and they exchanged the goods for money. 
Joey took care of the boat while Sheila left the Indians with the bandits, giving them a gun and ordering them to lie on the ground. Joey took care of the second couple, simply shooting them. Suddenly, Holland ran over, took the gun from their hands, and allowed the healthy one to beat up the veteran. But today, he was in better shape and beat up the Indian. It was such fun for Holland. In the end, he shot the Indian and gave Sheila the gun. Sheila took the bag of drugs and threw it into the sea, allowing her friends to take only the money. She learned from the news that the deal had gone wrong. Her supplier, Johnny Kleitz, called her and threatened that if he didn't get the money or the goods back, he would do the same to Sheila and the poor guy with the propeller of the catamaran. When Sheila arrived at work, really attacked Lucas, suspecting him of setting him up. Then Sheila announced that some benefactor had made the best gift, sports equipment, computers, books, musical instruments, and even free pizza. In general, Sheila found where to invest the director's money. Director Sherman likes what is happening and offers Sheila help in the fight against the school gang. The mercenaries told the teacher about the director's connection with organized crime, but Sherman refuses to believe that a black brother could be involved in such activities. It's all politics, and the white people are once again causing trouble for the African Americans. Ralia also realized what his money had been spent on. After class, Glaze's men followed Sheila. They shot the mercenary's car point blank, and it crashed into a trailer at high speed. Sherman stayed late at school, checking the students' work. Lisa asked him to walk her home but exit through the main entrance. They couldn't do it, so they witnessed the unloading of a large batch of goods in the school basement. Sherman hid the girl and asked her to tell everything to Teacher Smith while he distracted the bandits. Out of desperation, Sherman climbed up the rope, but they pulled him down. The poor guy tried to escape, but the school principal personally killed him. Ah, and who died? I got drilled a little. The director prematurely announced Sheila's death, but they did find Sherman's body on the school grounds. Sheila found out that the lawyer Wolfson wanted to hire her specifically to work with Glaze, the director's supplier. The director cornered the mercenary and interrogated him with a bias. He had to tell everything he knew about Raleigh and the delivery of goods to different schools. Jerome and Lisa came to Jane to tell her what was happening at school, but the woman was already taken hostage by Lucas and his men. The teacher was supposed to lure her here, and realizing that something was wrong, Sheila took shurikens and throwing knives with her. Sheila rang the doorbell, pretending to be someone else, and covered her face with a box. She shot one of the bandits, but was shocked and disarmed. Lucas called Glaze, who ordered him to kill the mercenary. But then there was a knock on the door, and Sheila took advantage of the distraction and took down three of Lucas's henchmen. The student took Jane hostage and was about to kill the teacher, but Jerome, who managed to pick up a gun, shot him. Lisa told them that the criminals had hidden the goods in the boiler room and killed Teacher Sherman. Sheila decided to deal with all the bandits at once. She put the bodies in a car and left it near Glaze's base. The boss was informed that Sheila was seen at school, and she and her friends had already set up an ambush in the building. Together with Glaze, a group of Vilman's mercenaries approached the school. The sniper almost shot Sheila but missed. Another group of mercenaries arrived, and a shootout ensued. Joey set up an ambush in the teacher's lounge, and Vilman and the mercenaries exchanged gunfire in the hallways. Soon, there were grenade launcher shots in the schoolyard targeting the packages of goods. Cold planted explosives and finished off the stunned mercenaries. At the same time, their leader fell into a trap in the wing and was gunned down at the school board. Shortly after, Ram, who was covering his friends from the roof, was fatally wounded. He took a grenade from the saboteur before he died and took down an enemy sniper with him. Holland had glaze in his sights, but the director approached him from behind and shot him before dying. He informed Sheila that someone was already waiting for her and had outsmarted the bandits, but a fight broke out between him and the director nonetheless. Sheila wounded Glaze, and with his last strength, Holland shot Raleigh. Raleigh escaped briefly, but then attacked the veteran from around the corner. 
He managed to seize the gun, but Sheila finished him off with her signature move. After the massacre, only Joey and the teacher remained alive. There was little left of the school, and the mercenaries decided it was time for them to find new employment. 